those comments below people's profiles saying, this is what I'm looking for, no Asians. This is what I'm looking for, no Asians. This is what I'm looking for, no Asians. And so I thought, well, if I, if I don't look Asian, maybe somebody will finally be willing to date me. For any person of colour, whether you're light skinned or dark skinned, wherever you fall within that, you will be at some point affected by colorism. To help explain colorism, I want to explain racism first. Racism is when you are treated differently by another race. You are treated negatively by another race. When it's colorism, you are treated uh, negatively based on your shade of skin within the community that you represent. So let's say for example, uh, colorism for me is uh, I'm treated better now because I'm lighter skinned than some other people in my community. If I was darker skinned, I would be treated more negatively. It hinders your success in a community of color if you are darker skinned and you're encouraged to lighten up as much as possible if you want to see success. I felt so much pressure to bleach my skin from a, such a young age. Honestly, if I could have bleached my skin at four or five years old and if I had access to do it, I probably would have done it. I only got access to bleaching cream when I was nine when I stole bleaching cream from my uh, cousin. Um, I felt like I needed to do it to lighten up as much as possible and at that point it wasn't because of colorism, it was because of racism. I was abused so regularly in my hometown and I wanted people to see me as not Pakistani. I wanted them to just assume I was Mediterranean or whatever I thought was the thing that was going to keep me safe as a nine-year-old. I wanted to be lighter skinned because I thought that that was the only way I was going to be able to date. I've been on a dating website for months without anyone ever responding to a message, without all those comments, with those comments below people's profiles saying, this is what I'm looking for, no Asians. This is what I'm looking for, no Asians. This is what I'm looking for, no Asians. And so I thought, well, if I, if I don't look Asian, maybe somebody will finally be willing to date me. And so that's why I started bleaching again at 16. I do remember how it felt physically. It felt like I'd only ever been burned by the sun once. It, I, it, as Asians, it takes quite a while to experience sunburn. Um, so it felt like sunburn and it stung so much. Uh, and so I only bleached for a few days and then finally I just couldn't take the discomfort anymore so I stopped bleaching. When I was 16, it was a lot more emotional. That pain, I, I felt such shame and disgust that I had to resort to such measures to be perceived as desirable for people to want to date me. And so it wasn't physically uncomfortable, I mean it wasn't comfortable, but I would have been willing to put up with that kind of pain. But it, the torture was more mental, I, I just couldn't reconcile that after a few days of bleaching thinking this is what I've had to resort to. And so that's why I stopped after a week or two. I have so many issues with social media. First off, those filters. Those filters that you can just, it's so simple. Back in the day, you had to Photoshop, like you had to learn how to Photoshop to be able to change as much as you wanna change about yourself in a picture. Now it's literally a swipe, and then you're, you're almost changed completely, and a lot of it is changing our skin tone. And I think that is a really, really damaging part of social media. The fact that within a, a one touch, you are changing almost your ethnicity and suggesting that you are more attractive if you are lighter skinned. If I could go back to speak to the nine-year-old me, I wish I could tell him that this is not going to be the way you feel in many years' time. Yes, I know that you're doing this to protect yourself right now. However, your skin tone is beautiful. It, there's a reason why you're this color. and. All of this that you're feeling right now will dissipate within the next few years. I also wish I could tell that nine-year-old me that I should be so proud of that skin color. It represents who my people are, what my culture is, where we've come from. Uh, and I didn't understand any of that at the age of nine. For those of you who are younger, who have bleached, who've thought of bleaching, I promise you I don't judge you for it. 
I understand all too well why you feel the pressure to bleach. I promise you I'm not judging you. I would like to encourage you to really understand why you think it's important to bleach. I want you to know that it is not necessary. Those feelings you feel right now of uh, uh, insignificance, uh, uh, unattractive, like your life will be unsuccessful if you remain the shade you are. I promise you, you won't feel that way when you are a little older, a little wiser, and that's not meant to sound condescending. When you're a little older, a little wiser, I promise you'll realize that there was no, there was never a need to change. Your skin color is gorgeous. There are so many reasons why I wanted to do this documentary. The main one is that I was, at the time I was about to have a child, um, I wanted my son to never experience what I experienced when I was a kid. I wanted him to understand that his dad had done all he could to encourage people to see uh, any shade of skin as worthy, valuable, worthy of love, worthy of respect. Uh, and I'm hoping that that's what we achieved with this documentary. I would love to say, that we should stop selling ble bleaching creams all over the world. That isn't technically the solution. Some people desperately rely on it. I think what we need to change is the conversation and the mentality and, the, and our psyche when it comes to how we treat people of darker skin tones or how we treat people, any people of color. And we need to educate them to understand that the, the comments they're making to the youngins are damaging. I don't think we're gonna get away from this until the most powerful industries in the world start to cast or hire people of darker skin tones or a, my, a more diverse mix of skin tones. We've only really seen this within the last five years or so where the likes of Bridgerton, we now see darker skinned women as the desirable lead. I've never seen that in my lifetime. It happened for the first time within the last year. It's 2022. There's a reason why we haven't got away from this. It's not just immigrants coming to this country who are perpetuating this. I think at that point, once we've done all of that work, then we can consider getting rid of bleaching creams. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to catch Beauty and the Bleach on BBC Two and iPlayer.